Hi everyone, in this video we'll be demonstrating the new 5-axis capabilities that most of the 3D toolpaths in Fusion 360's manufacturing workspace have adopted. We'll be showing all the primary mode options, methods to control the preferred tilt, different powerful options to avoid collisions and ways to ensure the toolpath stays within the limits of your machine tool. Firstly, let's look at the toolpaths which have now adopted the multi-axis options. The toolpaths are parallel, scallop, pencil, spiral, radial, morph spiral and project. It's worth noting that these options have been in steep and shallow for a while. The only difference being that steep and shallow has the ability to use lead and lean. Within these toolpaths, we now see a sixth tab in the toolpath dialog form. This is the multi-axis tab. In here, we'll define all of our multi-axis options. One important point to note is that currently we only support lollipop and ball nose tools. Let's take a look at what options are available to us in the multi-axis tab within these strategies. Firstly, we have our primary mode. This dictates the default state of our tool axis. For example, if our primary mode is set to from point and we have none of the other multi-axis options turned on, our tool axis is always going to be guided by that point. We'll look at the specific options and what they do a little bit later on in the video. The options available to us within the primary mode selection are vertical, from point, to point, from curve and to curve. The override tilt angle maintains the tool axis tilt at the specified angle wherever possible. The tilt angle will be overridden to avoid a collision, assuming we have collision avoidance turned on. So for example, if we have our primary mode set as from point, but the tilt angle necessary to maintain alignment with the point is too severe, we can use the override tilt angle and set a lower preferred angle, but our tool will still be guided by the point set in our primary mode. The collision avoidance section allows us to use several options to ensure our holder and shaft does not collide with our component. The distance we would like the shaft and holder to stay away from our component is specified in the tool tab at the bottom right here. This checkbox is off by default, but is automatically turned on when collision avoidance is checked. The options we have for collision avoidance are as follows. Automatic, which is only available when the primary mode is set to vertical, from point, to point, from curve, and to curve. The final section is the tool axis limit section. The options in here allow us to define the limits of our machine tool to ensure the toolpath calculated in Fusion 360 doesn't violate the limits of our machine tool. Let's go through some examples of how we can make multi-axis toolpaths with the new options. One of the most popular multi-axis options is using a vertical primary mode with the collision avoidance mode set to automatic. As stated earlier, this mode will maintain a vertical tool axis wherever possible, but will tilt accordingly when a collision is detected. This mode suits more complex, feature-rich components. Smoothing distance and smoothing angle can be tweaked to alter the way the axis transitions. For example, if we think our axis movement is too condensed into a small area, we can make the smoothing distance larger to fan the axis movement out over a larger distance. Other primary mode options are from point and curve. When we think of these options, imagine our tool has an infinite axis going through it. If we only have a primary mode set, that infinite axis will always be running through our point, or in the case of a curve, running through the closest section of it. When we set from point or curve, the point or curve should be above our workpiece. This method is generally suited to recessed geometry. 
two point and curve works in the same way, but inverted. The same thinking applies. Imagining the tool has an infinite axis going through the center of it, the tool axis will always be guided by that point or the closest section of the selected curve. However, when using two point and curve, the point or curve should be lower than the tool. And this method is generally suited to protruding forms. Moving on to the next section down, we have the override tilt angle option. This option is only available when we have our primary mode set to to or from point and curve. This option works well with the other options. For example, we may have set our primary tool axis from a curve, but upon simulation we realise the curve we set is too low, meaning the axis tilt is more than we need. We can set a preferred tilt angle to better control the tool axis. We can see in this example, tool axis is still being driven by the curve, but the amount it tilts is controlled by the preferred angle. Something to keep in mind is that as we move down the options in the multi-axis tab, the level below takes precedence over the one above. For example, if we set our primary mode as from point, our preferred tilt angle will override that. If we have collision avoidance selected, that will override them both. And the tool axis limits overrides everything. Now let's look at our collision avoidance options. As stated earlier, the lowest touch form of multi-axis is a vertical primary mode and the collision avoidance mode set to automatic. This means the toolpath will maintain a vertical tool axis wherever possible. Keeping the axis movement at a minimum generally gives us a better surface finish and an all round better result. However, if the toolpath detects a collision with a holder and or shaft, automatic collision avoidance is intelligent enough to tilt away from that collision by the distance set in the shaft and holder clearance section in the tool tab. We also have the options to use from and to point and curve for our collision avoidance. These options can be used with any of the primary modes set. For instance, we can have a vertical primary mode, meaning the tool will remain in a three axis state wherever possible, but will be guided by the point or curve wherever it encounters a collision, much like this example here. Alternatively, we can have a primary point or curve and use another point or curve to guide our tool away from collisions. In this example, our tool axis is being guided by our curve. I have another curve which is lower set as my collision avoidance curve. When Fusion 360 detects a collision with the holder and or shaft, the tool axis will tilt an appropriate amount towards the collision avoidance curve. The same applies to from and to a point. The final section is tool axis limits. As stated earlier in the video, this is where we define the maximum and minimum angles our multi-axis toolpath can tilt to. It's a great tool for defining your machine limits. We have the option to define our reference Z from the setup Z, which is our default WCS state or tool orientation if we've set a tool orientation in the geometry tab. Minimum and maximum tilt angles set the maximum we can tilt and the areas beyond limits allows us to trim toolpath past that point or simply machine at tilt limit, which is generally the optimum choice. If you need a reminder of what each option does, by simply hovering over it, we get a tooltip describing the function of that parameter. This is incredibly useful. Importantly, we have a lot of different options here. When we use all the options together, we can create some really efficient and powerful multi-axis toolpaths. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.